Hello, welcome to Word of Inspiration and thank you for joining me today. This is Word of Inspiration and my name is Dr. Bertha Sewa Ayi and I present a daily program that is designed to encourage you in your daily living and to inspire you to be the best version of yourself. Today's message is entitled Part 2 of Be Fruitful and I've subtitled it Activate Your Fruitfulness. And the verse I I picked today is taken from the book of John chapter 12 verse 24 and there Jesus specifically said verily verily I say unto you unless a corn of wheat falls onto the ground and dies it abideth alone but if it, but if it dies it brings forth much fruit Jesus was actually using it to refer to his own life and the death that he was to undergo meaning when he dies he will bring forth much fruit and my goal is that by the end of this message, you will understand that God has already put everything that you need to be fruitful inside of you. You need to activate it. And we're going to be looking at the cell cycle. See, Jesus Christ was one of the most fruitful people to have ever lived on this earth. Because according to this verse, he activated his fruitfulness by actually dying. He was referring to his death on the cross. And because he died, his life started to germinate, and today he has thousands of followers. What did Christ do? He gave up his life. So part of the thing I'll be talking about today is to let you know that you are going to have to give up something to be fruitful, and you have to activate that fruitfulness. It's not going to come on a silver platter, even though you have been programmed to succeed. What does it really mean to be fruitful? It means to bring forth much fruit. Today, I have in my hand an avocado, which I have attempted to cut open. And when I cut it open, I find that there is a seed on the inside of it. There is a seed on the inside of it. Now, this avocado will remain alone if it stays like this. However, if it's put in the ground, like Jesus is saying, it will bring forth much fruit. Similarly, I also have in my hand an apple. You realize that if I open this apple, Inside it, I would find seed. If it's planted, it would bring forth much fruit. Now, tell me what efforts these apple, this apple and the avocado had to do to get seeds. They didn't have to put in much effort because God already designed it. And I also have a tomato to show you. Inside of it, you would find lots and lots and lots of seeds ready for it to multiply. In other words, you have already been programmed to be fruitful. Fruitful in your body, fruitful in your words fruitful in your actions and fruitful in your activities and fruitful in your spirit. I went over these to some extent yesterday. Today, what I want to explain to you is that the period of fruitfulness actually happens at a time when nobody can see it. It is the face of multiplication that becomes obvious. Why am I saying this? You know, God gave a commandment in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Well, first 11 to the earths, verse 22 to the animals, and then to human beings in 28, he said, he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. How can God give a command without laying the groundwork? And you know, we didn't find much about the human body or plant cells until 1665, when a gentleman noticed that there were some things that he called pores. In actual fact, they were cells from the oak of a, of a tree. And it took about 300 years before scientists were able to explain or understand cell division or what has been called mitosis. Now, what is interesting about cell division? If any of these plants or seeds die or get into the ground, what actually happens is that they go through a phase or what has been described as a cell cycle. Not to bore you with biology, but a cell cycle is a series of events that involve all the stages the cell goes through to be able to duplicate itself. Now, what is interesting is that apparently the actual division is only a tiny, tiny fragment of this whole process of cell division. There are five phases, five phases in a cell cycle. First, the cell divides. That's the mitosis phase. And then there's the G1 phase when the cell is just growing or getting bigger. Then there's the S or synthesis phase where the DNA of the, of the cell multiplies. During that time, nobody knows that it's the DNA is multiplying, but it has actually multiplied. 
Then it goes to the G2 phase where it begins to prepare for mitosis. And after mitosis, it can rest in sometimes a G0 phase. Now, this is interesting for several reasons. It tells you that the cell multiplies before it multiplies. I want you to think of what I've said for a moment. You multiply before you multiply. Or better still, you are fruitful before you multiply. And most of the time, this G0, this S phase, and the G1 phase, nobody sees it. But it makes up the majority of time that the cell of the cell cycle. The multiplication phase is only a tiny fragment. In fact, even in the mitosis phase, it appears nothing is happening. And so what the phase that is called cyto, cytogenesis, when the cell actually begins to divide. And it's also a very tiny fragment. Let me give you some real life example. Let's think about somebody like Thomas Edison. The history has it that he spent, he, he spent several hundreds of hours doing over a thousand experiments before he came up with a light bulb. During that time, nobody knew he was even making a light bulb. Maybe a few close friends would know. But when his final product is here, today there are light bulbs everywhere. He has become fruitful or he's multiplied. But during the quiescent period of work, nobody saw it. Take a pregnant woman, for example. When a woman is pregnant for the first two or three months, sometimes she doesn't even know it. But it's the time of greatest activity. The cells are moving, multiplying, becoming something that would turn into a human being, right? But then what is the time of actual, actual delivery? Labor might last 11 to 24 hours, but the baby comes out in maybe 30 minutes. So to think that for 30 minutes, we would consider that she's become fruitful. Look at the length of time, almost nine months of forming a baby on the inside of her. Another good example to give you is that recently I take care of hepatitis C patients and a drug called Harboni was released by the company Gilead about five, three to four years ago. Now, the drug was phenomenal. It provided a cure for hepatitis C, something that had evaded researchers for many, many years. Do you know how much that pill cost? Well, a course of 12, a 12 week course of treatment carried a price tag of 84 thousand dollars wow for 12 weeks of treatment yes it caused a lot of commotion in the government among policymakers and a lot of healthcare systems in fact the manufacturers were called to congress to defend how a pill could cost eighty four thousand dollars but here here was their defense and rightly so they had spent 10 years in research and development and spent billions of dollars to develop this drug so they felt it was worth the price. What am I trying to say? They had spent a lot of time incubating, multiplying. If you put it in the cell cycle stage, they had gone through the G1 phase, the synthetic phase, the G2 phase, and they were ready to now make a lot of money out of their, out of their period of hard work. Similarly, if you invent a work of art, music, you write a book, nobody even knows when you're writing this book. You spend lots and lots of time being fruitful before the book goes to production and then you actually start multiplying. The bottom line of what I'm telling you is that God wants you to be fruitful. God wants you to be fruitful, but he has already programmed you to be fruitful. I want you to I want to draw the cell cycle for you if you just give me a moment. So over here, here is example of a cell or better still the cell cycle. This phase is called mitosis. And all of this phase is called interphase. Now, if you consider mitosis in itself, it is just a very small area of this period when the cell actually divides. For all this phase is going through what is called anaphase, telophase, uh, metaphase, and finally telophase, where the cell DNA lines up and divides. But this phase, the G1 phase, is just growing. The cell is just growing. And then there's this whole S phase, when the DNA gets synthesized. And here is the power of what I'm telling you, that 
although the cell is only one cell, it's already got double DNA during this phase. And in the G2 phase, it just rests and prepares to go through this period of mitosis again. So think of it. You become fruitful before you multiply. God has already programmed you to be fruitful. So the cell has already got double DNA and is just waiting to enter into that short, very short, very, very short phase of cell division. So when you see somebody prospering, they've already, they've already multiplied in their quiet moments before they actually multiply. Friend, I just want to encourage you. I don't know what ideas you've been thinking about, what you've been planning to do. Those ideas are actually your seed, just like this avocado. It's just waiting to be multiplied. During that time, like the Harboni drug with the Gilead company, you need to let it undergo research and development. Maybe it means you have to go to school to develop your talent. Maybe you have to incubate that idea. You have to be pregnant with it. And then a period will come when you start multiplying and the whole world will see it. But the truth of the fact that of the fact is that you were carrying the seed all along. What is your seed? God wants you to be fruitful and to multiply. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your instruction to be fruitful. As we enter 2018, we commit to fruitfulness. We will not be lazy. We would work the gift that you've given to us. We would have to go through a phase of dying. Yes, sometimes sacrifice. And like Jesus Christ, we hope that we'll be fruitful. Today, I pray for somebody who feels unmotivated. They've been hit so hard in life, they don't feel like going on anymore. I pray that as you hear this word, you would pick yourself up, get yourself back up again and fight on. The Bible says a righteous man will fall seven times, but he would rise up. I pray for somebody who feels they don't have any resources. They are going into 2018 broke, hungry, tired, that you would strengthen them and equip them because the ministry of Jesus Christ, he said, I came to set the captives free. He came to give good news to them that are broken, to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, the opening of eyes to the blind, and to give good news to the poor. Today, please say this after me. I'm a winner. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm the head and not the tail. God has already placed within me all that I need to multiply. In fact, I'm fruitful before I start multiplying. I will take my words. I will let them bless somebody. I will plant words that would be fruitful. I would plant words that would be fruitful. And in another segment, I'll talk about words. But every word that you speak is a seed. That is why at the end of my program, I always tell you, say, I'm a winner. I'm more than a conqueror. I'll be the head and not the tail. Because the Bible says that words are seeds. The Bible says in Proverbs that a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. So every word that you speak is a seed. What are you speaking about your life today? Are you speaking positive things? One day you have to eat them up. And literally, sometimes you have to eat up the words you've spoken. So speak good words, speak good words, be fruitful in your body, be fruitful in your spirit, and definitely join me again tomorrow for Word of Inspiration. This has been Dr. Bertha Ayi presenting the message, Part 2, Be Fruitful, God Richly.